What's up YouTube? I'm Ollie Beans from I Freaking Love This and today I'm going to show you how to use your GoPro as a webcam and the best settings to use. Now I know my ugly mug might not be the best example but this is being shot using my GoPro Hero 7 Black. I've tested this setup and settings on GoPro Hero 3 Plus through GoPro Hero 7. I'm sure to work on some of the other models, but you'll want to look up a specific model if it's not in between the 3 Plus and the Hero 7. With that said, let's get right into how to use your GoPro as a webcam and the best settings to use for the best image. First, let's cover the hardware you'll need. First, of course, you're going to need a GoPro. Really, any version 3 to 7 will work, but you'll want to make sure it can have the clean HDMI out. And then you'll want a capture card. Now, by far, the most popular capture card is the CamLink 4K, and that'll run you around 130 bucks on Amazon or Best Buy these days. I'll have a link down to that below. But you can also get away with using one of these cheaper $20 Amazon cheap generic capture cards. And... They work surprisingly well. Don't get me wrong, the CamLink 4K definitely has better image quality, but for 20 bucks, this works surprisingly well and it does work good enough. And then lastly, you're gonna need a micro HDMI to HDMI cable. If you go the budget route, you can have an amazing webcam setup for under 100 bucks. I also highly recommend getting some good lighting. I personally use softbox lighting. I'll link the lights that I use below, but you can also get away with some cheap LED kits. All right, let's move on to actually connecting the GoPro to the capture card and connecting it to your computer. Once you've got all the hardware ready to connect your GoPro to your computer, you just want to take your GoPro, open up the part that leads to the USB Type-C and the micro HDMI part. And you want to take that cable you got, plug that right into the micro HDMI, then take the other end of the cable and plug that into the back of your capture card. And now your capture card uses a USB connection. This is the cheap capture card as an example. My CamLink's currently plugged into the back of my machine. And so you'll notice this is USB 2.0. Regardless of whether or not you use the CamLink or the cheap capture card, and the CamLink has 3.0, you want to use a USB 3.0 on the back of the machine. And the reason being is you want to make sure you don't have a throttle anywhere on your machine uh, or a bottleneck, excuse me, anywhere on your machine that might throttle down the bandwidth of the capture card. And so you give it a USB 3.0 on the back of the machine because those have the ones directly connected to the motherboard will have a much higher bandwidth than a lot of times the ones on the front port of your computer. And once that's plugged in, you just want to turn on your GoPro and then we'll open up OBS in a moment here to see what it looks like. All right, and once you've got your GoPro plugged into the capture card, which is then plugged into your computer, you want to load up the software that you're going to be using to access your webcam, or your GoPro in this case. And so the software I recommend is what you're seeing on screen right now, which is OBS, or Open Broadcast Software. I'll have a link to that down below for you. Now, if you just want to use your GoPro for things like Zoom meetings, you would just open up your, your Zoom select the input source for the video and then select the one it'll it's just say video capture device i believe for the generic one and for the cam link 4k it will say cam link 4k now you're going to do a similar process here you see here i already have a, a source added for gopro let's actually remove that and you would just hit the plus symbol go to video capture device and our and you would type in the name for the one that you want to add I already have one set up, so I'm going to add that here. And it just took up the whole screen, so we're going to bring that up there. And then when you add a new source, it will bring you to this properties screen, right? And so let me turn my GoPro on. There we go. We've got the GoPro on. And so for mine, it's CamLink 4K. You might have d other ones that are here for the cheap generic video capture device. It might be labeled something differently. Just look for the appropriate name. Then here... I usually do my uh, FPS custom and resolution custom, even though you can do uh, the default. And then here I would just do 1920 by 1080 because that's what I have my GoPro set to. For CamLink, I do highest FPS. 
when I use the generic capture card, it will let me actually choose a frame right there, and I would just choose to match whatever's coming out of my GoPro. Video format, I'm going to choose YUI2. Color space, you're going to go 709. Color range, you're going to want to go full. And then I disable buffering. Click OK. And now let's actually full screen this because we're going to be looking at the settings to really what makes this image look so nice right now. So when you have your GoPro connected to your computer through the HDMI port to the capture card, you can no longer see the LCD on the back of the GoPro. The, and for this reason, I recommend using the GoPro app, which I believe is good for GoPro models 4 and above. So when you've got your GoPro app open, you just want to click on the cogwheel in the bottom right. And you can see here, I have ProTune set to on. If we turn ProTune off, you can see that image really brightens up a lot. And you can see a lot of noise in the, in, on the background and on the sides. And that's because the GoPro is automatically adjusting. And the GoPros were made to be used outside in well-lit areas. So when you're using it indoors, they're going to make adjustments that aren't necessarily going to give you the best image quality. Now let's also do a test with me bringing my light sources down a little bit. You can see I brought my light source down and GoPro automatically bumped up that ISO so they added even more noise and which then made my image worse even though it brightened it up for the lack of light source. Let's bring that light source back up. And let's open up ProTune here. So yours is usually going to come by default off. So I'm going to put it on. And we can see here the color of the image just changed drastically as well as that noise and grain in the background. And the settings I have that control that are your shutter speed, your ISO, your white balance, and your sharpness. So you want to make sure that your shutter speed is double what your um, frame rate is. So I have my frame rate set to 30, so I'm going to have my shutter speed at 1 over 60. And that'll ensure that you don't have any blur when you're moving, but also you're letting in the as much light as possible. For ISO, you want to have the min and the limit match each other. So that way it's not very, there's no variations in your ISO. For me, the sweet spot was 200. You don't want to set this number over 400 because then you'll have the grain that was there when we weren't using the custom settings. And so what you generally want to do is turn up your light source as bright as you can and then increase your ISO from 100 up to 400 until you hit the sweet spot. If you have to put your ISO above 400, you need to get a better lighting source. And then you, after that, you want to match your white balance to the color that, of the lights that you have coming up. So my lights are 5500 Kelvin, so I have them matched here. If I did the mismatched, we would have a drastically different image. So let's go back here, bring it back to the color I know my lights are, and there we go. We've got a more accurate color representation. Next setting is sharpness. Generally speaking, medium and, and high aren't going to have much of a difference, so I recommend keeping it at medium for performance reasons. And then for your color set, this is going to be up to you. So you can see here I'm using the GoPro color. I could also use a flat color and then add some pop and processing. But again, I want my OBS to be running smoothly, so I'm going to do some of that processing using the GoPro color. And there we go. That's how to add your GoPro to OBS and make sure it has the best settings for the best possible image. <laughs> And there you have it, how to use your GoPro as a webcam and the best settings to use for the best possible image. Now, if you found this video helpful, obviously would appreciate a like, you know, maybe even hit that subscribe and that bell to be notified of when I put out new content. If you ever have any questions about the videos I do or some of the free resources I give out, you can come over and check me out on Twitch. I stream three nights a week, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. You can just follow below. I'll put the link below for you uh, to be notified of when I go live. And you can come by, ask me questions about your GoPro settings or anything else, or just come bust my chops while I game. Thanks for watching. I'm Ollie Beans. I'll see you in the next video. Be good to each other.